Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday project, which is a really great uh, project in R for um, they release a data set each week. Now, one second, I'm having a bit of a problem with my streaming. Can people see me? One second, please. Having some issue with my streaming software. All right. People can hear me? Ah, fantastic. Okay, yes. Hi. So, um, thanks so much for joining. This is the uh, Tidy Tuesday. Uh, let me show me how the computer. This is the welcome to the Tidy Tuesday screencast. Every week we have a new data set. This one's a really important one on Af uh, an African American achievements. So, we'll see what we have this week. So, this data set explores a history of um, black lives and their achievements. Uh, it. it uh, it, this also has a link to a few really great causes that are worth a donation. A petition to rename the Fisher Lectureship after David Blackwell, uh, which, uh, which I, def I support and I recommend that you do too. Uh, so this is really one that's worth visiting. You can find a link to the README and some of these petitions and links on the YouTube, uh, on the page for the YouTube channel. Uh, so the, um, so uh, yeah, so so this is I think it's a really it's a really important cause on a really important uh, at a really important time in American history, and um, we're going to take a look at some of the data sets that uh, that were that we have here. It looks like two data sets, one in firsts, one for sci uh, science, and we're going to be exploring them. I'm going to go into our, our studio and grab the current this week's data. Here it is. Let's see. All right, library tidyverse, library, uh, I'll say theme set, theme light. And we've downloaded the two data sets. Let's take a quick look at it. So we remember we can see the README here with some of the details, and we can also see some of the details of the two data sets we're looking at, FIRST and SCIENCE. So we're going to take a look here at FIRST. All right, so it looks like we have 479 entries here of, um, the, let's see, it's all, I'm looking through here, I think it's all, it's all Americans. It's across a couple of categories, sports, education, science, military, kind of gives a sense of a, of a timeline here. Uh, one thing we can see is that there's a bit of data cleaning that can be done. There's these, um, uh, this said, it looks like this comes from Wikipedia, I'm guessing, because you can see the, uh, the links to citation, to citations. Um, so the, um, and there's a bit of cleaning we can do, so we can learn to do a bit of data cleaning here. Here we can see some, um, it's actually interesting, there's also kind of extra information about each of these, like the first African American to hold a patent was in 1821, Thomas Jennings, for a dry cleaning process. Uh, there's also, we're probably not going to use the number here, we're probably going to strip that out. Uh, we see gender, it looks like sometimes we have the genders, other times we don't. I can see, fe that might not be true, it might be, yeah, it looks like we have what are likely, um, women like Josephine Baker, uh, it's still not popular by gender, so I don't know if we can use gender here. Um, Hattie McDaniel is female and this is, and it's not popping up. Okay, so the, um, so we might not be able to use gender in this data set, but we can use category, we can use, uh, we can, we're certainly going to use year, and we're probably interested in accomplishment. Uh, all right, uh, so that's some cleaning, cleaning and analysis we're going to do. I, let's also take a look at our other data set. I wonder if there are ways they might be combined together or looking across them. So 120, uh, these are all scientists. Uh, so they're not necessarily first. They're, it looks like they're notable scientists. Uh, we have a description of their event, invention or accomplishment. And um, it links to, Wiki, to Wikipedia references. I am thinking about whether we can, uh, I don't know how I, how I would grab them from the page. I think we could probably scrape the page. We might do web scraping 
if we want to with this with the references and we certainly could do web scraping with the Wikipedia link uh, so we have here is we have like um, uh, all right so this looks like two data sets both interesting both relevant I'm gonna save as let's see. achievements all right All right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by exploring who's, uh, the, the first data set and might look for a way to turn this into an interactive timeline. This will actually be a first for me. I can't think of a time that I've made a timeline, uh, an interactive timeline in R, though I have a sense of how I might go about it. Uh, I think that might be an interesting approach to take here. All right, so let's start by looking at uh, year and category. Those are ones we can quickly get a sense of by um, with visualization. So if we look at year, we almost always do a histogram. So it looks like we have some data from the eight, from the eight, up to 1850, a moderate amount for late 1800s, early 1900s, and a lot of data from the last uh, from the last 50 years. A large set of African American firsts from recent history. Uh, it's, it's, it's typical for data to be, um, what's the word, uh, front-loaded in terms of having uh, recent history be more common, but this also is representative of naturally a history of, system, uh, of uh, systemic racism, where before where slavery was legal until this point, naturally it's, it's hard to, to have a lot of firsts um, before that. So the, um, and you similarly, in fact, it's actually interesting, you can also kind of see the Civil War um, and 13th Amendment, 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment here, and the, uh, the um, civil rights movement in the 1960s, uh, if you're not familiar with American history, these are two notable turning points in African American history. You can kind of see an increase just there in terms of the raw number. All right. And um, another, one, uh, another one we wanted to take a look at, I'm actually going to save it as first is Tuesday data firsts. Let's see. And... Uh, the other one I'm going to take a look at is, cat is category. So this is exactly the kind of thing we want if we want a visualization. In fact, I can throw this, I don't even have to lump it because it's in just eight categories, all of which have at least a few. I can actually lump this into, I can actually combine this into fill equals category and see, do I get a lot out of this? It's a little hard to say. Has there been a shift over time? Uh, it's hard to say in this one. Let me try facet wrap by category. Uh, I can't see a difference except that, yes, uh, we can't find any sports first before the year 1900. Uh, yeah, so, so natu naturally, there, aren't, there weren't a ton of professional American sports in the 1800s, but certainly the ones that were were, were definitely segregated. Uh, segregated. So the end, you can see some in the sports category. All right, so this is um, the other thing we can always do with the category is we can say category is FCT reorder category by N. Oh, I got it backwards. Um, for those who have ggplot, I believe it, it what is it, 3.0? I'm not sure which version. You can do this N, category, N on the X axis and see the categories here. All right, so the. Um, all right, so yeah, there, there we can see arts and arts and entertainment, education, politics, uh, and some in, in law, law and such. All right, I'm going to drop the faceting here. So these are just two two explorations. Now, here we go. Uh, all right, some people have pointed out other ways we might go about getting gender from here. We have information, uh, so this is in the comments. Uh, some people point out that we can use, uh, if we take a look at accomplishments, we do see women in some of them, uh, and we might see men in, in some others. Uh, or she, uh, and um, I also see notes that we can use she or he. So other people have noted that we can use the, uh, the gender package to get predictions from people's first name names. I think both of these are really useful. I'm going to stay away from it because I think with, uh, given the sensitive nature of the, of the data and given that it's only 470 people, I'd rather avoid uh, automate, I'd rather avoid 
um, automated uh, analyses of them, like uh, automated inference uh, that um, that someone is a man or a woman based just on their name and a description that may or may not contain information in that direction. I would, I really wouldn't want to erase people uh, just because the data, the, their their name is ambiguous or because. Um, uh, yeah, or, or because it wasn't mentioned in the description, I wouldn't want to erase African American women from the data set. So I'm um, I'm going to leave aside gender here, and um, I'd say there are times that it, it, there are times there are kind of lower stakes environments where it's very it's reasonable to do it, where you might just get a general sense of a gender breakdown um, in some other data sets. I don't think this is an appropriate case uh, to use it. So. We're going to uh, take a look then at cleaning the data a little bit. What we might clean the data is we might want, if anything we want to do, we probably want to drop the, um, the citation text. And I wonder, I can see, I can see some other information here. I can see some other things. There's like in parentheses, Sometimes the state, sometimes information, I can see commas, I can see parentheses. Those are all things I might want to drop. Okay, some of these aren't people, they're organizations. Uh, let me see. So this, given that this is human curated data from Wikipedia, there's going to be like like uh, lots of things in here that aren't, um, uh, that they have information like this, it's very typical when we're working with a web scrape data set. So let's do a bit of cleaning. Uh, first thing I think is in person, we'll want to string remove. I think we want to remove anything after a comma or a bracket. Uh, that string remove, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Nope. What I'm trying to do here is say, oh, comma or bracket. I did comma and bracket. So this regular expression, don't be confused. This is an escaped bracket. This is in brackets. Anything after a comma or a bracket will get removed. I'd also like to remove anything after a, um, a parenthesis. So comma, bracket, parenthesis. Notice I sometimes end up with a trailing space, like if there's a space, then a parenthesis. Um, and uh, I'm going to throw in... So what I'm actually going to do is then say also person equals string trim of person. That removes uh, space around, around these. Now it looks like we might, here we go, one problem we have, hmm, no, I don't, I'm not going to move after the comma because I get issues like this. I'm just seeing that as a first issue. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll find another way to deal with them. Let me pull person and see what the most common issues that are still remaining. Uh, we definitely do see issues with commas. Looking through, looking through, we see descriptions. I think the descriptions are sometimes, so the first thing is the descriptions are sometimes useful. Uh, they could, uh, the for, the comma, the semicolon, that's kind of extra information. Hmm. You know, if I wanted to get people's names, the way to do it is not by parsing this. I think the way to do it would be by grabbing the information from Wikipedia. So, uh, oh wait, hold on. Do I have the do I have the Wikipedia data here? I do not on this one. What page does this come from? Uh, I think I can see this in the scrape data. I'm deciding right now. Am I going to go about going through a um? This is, uh, so this, there's some, uh, so notice that one of the great things about Tidy Tuesday is to provide the cleaned data. So there's the science one. Here's the firsts. All right, so it's grabbed from, list, uh, so here I'm just looking through the code uh, that was used to create this table, and I'm interested in, can I pull the articles? Why am I, the article links? Why well, I'm interested in that, it's a cleaner way to get their name and potentially other information about them. We could get people's birth year, we could get people's, um, uh, at least for the ones that have an article. Uh, we could get people's birth year, we could get, um, uh, death year, we could get people's state of origin in, in, a, in a structured way. Uh, that's one approach here. I'm also, let me see. I'm also just looking through a second. Yes, yeah, see, it's grabbed out of this. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to return to that. I think I'm going to be scraping Wikipedia today. I'm not. 
going to do it yet. Okay. Uh, all right. So what, I, what I'm actually seeing though is there's semicolon, there's four, there's uh, sometimes some. All right, so commas are kind of an, an issue. They could sometimes represent multiple people. It's not. Maybe I don't want to split these up. Uh, Maybe I kind of want to show this in, this information at once. Not all of these are people. Some of them are a comic book, uh, or a um, or an organization, or an organization. Uh, not all of them are real people. Some of them are fictional characters and such. So it's not going to be always going to be a year. Uh, all right. So um, I'm not going to parse this further, given that we might want to in other in other contexts. Uh, there's other things we 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 could do. But I'm actually going to think for a second. I think I'm going to try making this a, uh, I think I'm going to try making this a, um, an interactive timeline. I haven't done this before, so let's, uh, bear with me a moment. First, anytime I think interactive graphics, I'm usually going to use the Plotly package. And what, um, what I might want here is, if I take a look at the first data, uh, first, I'm going to do it with the, with our little bit of cleaning, just removing the citations. I don't think the citations add anything. Uh, and it's, I'm going to disregard the. I'm not going to pay attention to the, the gender col column, but accomplishment and person are both important. Yeah, uh, and of course, uh, of course, year. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plot year color equals category. Uh, year zero color equals category. Geom point. So this so far is not a very exciting, um, actually, if I don't give an x at a y-axis, no, it, it needs a y-axis. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is drop the, um, I'm doing a timeline, I want to drop this, um, this dimension completely. There's actually something cool I can say, I can say, um, I'm right now, uh, what is it? It's plot kicks. L -X oh, axis text y equals element blank. I can get rid of the x-axis picks, and I can also probably get rid of, ma of panel grid major y is element blank, and panel grid minor y is element blank. I can just get rid of some of the, um, uh, of some of the Data here, and here's the other thing I'm going to do. I am going to also just say, so I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to make again an interactive timeline here. It's not looking like a timeline at all yet, but okay, this looks a little bit more like a timeline. I thought one more trick, one more thing I'm going to try. I'm going to try scale y continuous. Great. What I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, oh, and I also want axis ticks. Uh, x ticks y equals element blank. Get rid of everything that's on the y axis. Uh, other thing I'm going to do is set our y limb to be negative 0.1 to 1. That gets this at the bottom of the graph. Why am I doing all this? It's because it's going to be, uh, it's because I'm going to try and make it inter interactive. Uh, and I'm going to do that by, here we go. Let's, uh, so this is our plot. But I'm going to pipe it to ggplotly. Uh, ggplotly is an amazing function within the plotly package, and it just takes this ggplot, turns it into, a, into an interactive plot. Oop, nope, it doesn't. Oh, I need to save the plot. That's right. Because there's pluses here. ggplotly, I'm going to save it just as g. Here we go. So already a start. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is customize the text that's in here. I think that actually, I think at a very easy level, what I can do is I could add text equals um, category. You know, I like that that I see the category. I don't need to see the categories here. It's not adding that much. I'm going to say legend position equals none, and I'm going to say text equals. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm going to actually combine. the accomplishment and the person uh, with maybe a this in between. Uh, 
so so already we're actually kind of getting across an interactive. Now it's too it, now so uh, it's definitely like it definitely it's not it's certainly not not a, a perfect. Oh, I've got an idea. Oh, here's an idea. Oh, I didn't think of this. Color can be category, but Y can also be category. Y equals category. Uh, so Y is category, and now it'll be six time. It'll be eight uh, timelines. No, it. Oh, yeah, and now I don't need the Y. The Y limb. All right. So this actually now we can see it say. Uh, I'm gonna have to have to customize this um, this text in a moment. But the idea is we're getting closer now. It's not it's not ready for production, but we're getting closer. To, okay, I can zoom in. I can say, oh, what are, what are these accomplishments? And say, oh, it's in this category. So you can see the first social jobs um, one was uh, was the first free African American community, uh, the and the first sports one, which we noted earlier. No, it's sports is. Here, yes, was the was let's see, uh, first African American achieve world championship any sport, uh, Major Taylor. All right, and then we look through. We see Jack Johnson and I figure we're going to see yeah the. All right. Great. All right, so we can see recent ones. We can see um. So, uh huh. Yeah, so we get to kind of explore these um, these uh, this database on a timeline. Now, we pro next thing we're probably going to want to do is customize the text. Uh, just think about memory and how to do that for a moment. Uh, custom. Uh, let me see. Plotly. I, I I kind of forget this this stuff. Plotly custom text. Gg plotly custom text. Oh, that's interesting. We can do. This is a good. Oh, tooltip argument. Okay, tooltip equals. Oh, okay, great. We can say. All right. So here's what, what, what uh, a, a start is. I can say. Um, uh, I'm now suddenly see we have accomplishment. We have year. Imagine I did a year and then a bit of a space. No, actually, I like better accomplishment, person, and then year. Did I? Yeah. Oh, and uh, tooltip equals text. Text. Aha. Now notice, great. Now notice we actually we get just the text. We don't get the other information. But it's um, I'm sure you agree. It's a little bit. Too, it's better than it was before, but it's still too kind of too wide. I actually really like the tooltip is popping up on the, on the right. It's it's still a little bit too wide. I think I'd rather have it in three lines. And one thing we can do to get to get that is that um. We can actually say we can actually just add breaks in between these. This is like a uh, actually I'm gonna do. I think three lines might be too high. I'm gonna say year. If you've seen the volcano screencast, we did a lot of of formatting of HTML to create like little mouse over. Oop, that did not work. I'm looking through here. Does this so this works in text? Hmm. But the tooltip argument. Yeah, this is disappointing. I wonder. This is not, I think, the right approach. Oh, map HTML. Okay, I've got a suspicion here. I, I was gonna find out if this works. I think that possibly, if I put the um, where is HTML? Where is HTML? Where does it come from? 
Is it in shiny? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give something a shot. If I try applying the so there's actually like shiny HTML. Uh, it just turns this into a shiny object. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try saying text is map text. Somebody asked why not a new line. Two people asked that. Only two people asked that. A couple people asked that. I'm going to try my thing first because it would give me more options in terms of how I format it. Uh, oh, it hate it. Oh, oh, right. Yes, I need to. Uh, these aren't mutates. I can't do both of them. I'm going to do th like this for now and maybe clean it up in a bit. I was wrong. Applying shiny HTML did nothing. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with what people were suggesting, done this, and some other people suggested, I think they're exactly right, is using the glue package. Glue is fantastic for formatting these, these uh, kinds of strings. Uh, what I probably want to say glue, um, uh, what was it, it was year. This just gets, uh, this has nothing to do with ggplotly, it just is a way of turning these strings. Uh, and then it said uh, accomplishment. Uh, not inside the quotes. New line and uh, was a person. I forgot something. What did I forget? I forgot glue and uh, a and end parenthesis. All right. Thank you for everyone suggesting that. Uh, thanks for everyone. Yes. All right. I gotta, uh, I'm going to zoom in, and this is our, I'm going to add a couple things. I'm going to say title of some, sorry, uh, a timeline of some notable American achievements. I'm going to add the source. I think it's somewhat important in things like this to note where did we get this from. And um, if I say to his data, I can grab... Here it is. Huh, I actually don't need glue because it's not a variable. Source uh, and And here we have it. Uh, so the story is we can say 19, we can say I. That's actually, that's pretty usable. Uh, we really can explore these. I don't know if it's, I, I, I can't tell you whether it's um, uh, better or worse than a, um, uh, yeah, I can't tell you whether it's, uh, it's, it's more usable than the, than the table in the, the Wikipedia page. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty, um, Notable, we can see like first, this first. All right, all right, so that's a timeline. Um, a couple, uh, now let's go back to a couple of questions we got, we got from people. One is uh, from uh, Ramana, is it possible to convert this to an animated plotly? I don't know how animation and interactivity mix. I don't know, uh, and I'm also curious, like, I, I don't know what kind of animation I would use for this graph. I guess you could show names in a row. Uh, like here's a name, here's a name, here's here's a name. Uh, I think it would end, as I, like I said, I think it could be, I, basically can be either animation or interactive, not both. Unless there's an example I can't think of. There's a question of can you get the tooltip to always show up under or above the pointer rather than at, at its center? I think that's a good question because then we can um, uh, because for example, hmm, I look like sometimes it kind of covered it up. Uh, like, like, like here's a good example where, where it it, uh, it kind of covers up the point. Um, so can you do it uh, above or below? Let's ask. Uh, by ask, I mean let's look up ggplotly. If anyone wants to look it up while while I'm I'm talking, maybe you can find it faster too. Too. Uh huh. Tool tip. Should um, let's see.
The answer is I don't know. I really don't. I really don't know what, uh, how to make tooltips appear above, uh, above or below. I just, I kind of just, you know, I'm just busy. Uh, I'm just busy in the plot verse. Um, if anyone has ha, is able to figure that out or has a suggestion, would love to hear it in the in the comments. Um, all right. If I could, if I could get arbitrary HTML, I would tell you what I'd want to do. I'd want to get I'd want to get pictures in here because uh, we probably can scrape Wikipedia, get pictures from people that have it available, and uh, that definitely would make this kind of an obvious way to, to explore uh, the data. If we can't get HTML in here, it might not end up make really make, um, we might not be able to do anything with the picture. Uh, HTML in Plotly tooltip. You cannot put arbitrary HTML. Oh, it's weird because it says you can you can support these, or you can't do images into the hover labels. Uh, the translated from HTML to SVG. Okay, so we have an answer for that subset of HTML tags. We can't do a timeline with images. Uh, yes. So let's see. The um. Uh, so I'm not going to I'm not going to do a timeline with images. Can other people think of things we would ways we'd improve this timeline? If not, we're going to switch to the we're still going to do the Wikipedia scraping. Maybe we'll do it with the science uh, the scientist data set. And we have other suggestions for what, well, what else we might add into this timeline. All right. If there are other timelines you can think, there's really a lot of ways that timelines that can, can be like this interactive timelines can be created. You might create one for your company. You might create one for your uh, for your school or for um, or for a history project. I think it's um and notice that it wasn't anything. It wasn't a GG timeline package. It's using the tidyverse tools we love as well as other uh, really incredible plotly package. Um, all right, so let's move. Uh, let's go on to science. So we don't take a look at notable African American uh, scientists, and looks like we have birth year. Some uh, some are dead, some aren't. Uh, we have event inventions and accomplishments, and we do have Wikipedia links. This is the one I think I'm going to do some scraping. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, thing we can do from here. First, let's take a let's visualize. We don't have a year the accomplishment happened. We have the year of birth and death. Um, let me see. I could. Hmm. I'm just thinking of what ways I want to aggregate this that I might be able to learn. I mean, I could do a, a histogram of birth years. I don't think it's going to be too informative. It does note a lot of people born in the like. A Spike was kind of um, born in the 1940s, so active, probably scientifically uh, active in the late 20th century, um, and. Uh, yeah, there's other things we could do, but it's not um, sticking through. Yeah, what I might be interested in as well is some idea of the category of the categories here. We don't actually have category, but we have occupation. So if I, but if I do science count occupation, occupation is it called occupational status? That is called occupation S. I think occupational status is. Like, is so I'm built into R or something like that. So we have these. Um, it looks like they're sometimes split up by uh, by semicolons. So one thing we can use is not unnest. Separate rows from tidy R. Occupation S based on this column, and that will actually split. Up, nope. Did I misspell something? Oh, sep equals. Great. So one thing we actually can do, yep, is look at that, and then we probably want to say occupation is string to lower of occupation s. And uh, so why did I uh, actually instead of string to lower, I want string to title. Because uh, I noticed that we had like lowercase i. This is if it, if it's not the first item, it's probably um, it's probably not capitalized. So here we can see some of the common um, 
occupations. All right, that's great because it could allow us, if we created a timeline, I'm not going to get a timeline because it would just be based on birth year and that's a little odd, but we at least can see some of the occupations. Uh, so we could explore, here's the inventors, here's the chemists, here's, here's uh, mathematicians. I'm actually really, I'm interested in statisticians. Uh, that's my own, it's sort of my own occupation. Oh, uh, so let me actually take a look at the science and filter string detect occupation. The reason I'm not getting a, um, I'll tell you the reason I'm not uh, getting autocomplete as I want is that I'm using it from within here. Uh, this will work a little bit better just in terms of, here we go. String detect statistician statistician uh, and I want to ignore uh, the case the way you would to ignore case is let me see if I can if I remember this regex ignore case is true I actually wrap this in regex I forgot a parenthesis I only see three statisticians that, that uh, I think I'm missing something stat ignore case true uh, yeah, I'm missing something here because pull um, occupation. I'm missing something. Uh, string detect occupation. If I if what if I'm missing something in the regular expression? I'm looking for the ones that include istition. See, I see this. Oh. No, I was just counting wrong. There are there are three in the data set. Okay, yes. Um, all right. So the um, all right. So we got a uh, got an ad, all right, Before I continue with this, I did get an. It looks like I got an answer from Deepak uh, about the plotly uh, layout. So there was a question of how do I show um, how do I put this say always under or above layout hover. Uh, Deepak's suggestion is layout. Hover label align. Deepak, want to give me any more help on this one? I'm yeah, I'm, I'm jumping back to, to do the plotly timeline. Like, is it layer hover label align equals bottom or no? Uh, is it if I said above? I do not know if I said top. I do not know how to do this one. Uh, I might come back to it later, especially if Deepak. Oh, Deepak gave me a, a link. I keep the comments open on a separate window than I do the, the work, so I plotly reference. I cannot open the link. Uh, plotly reference layout. Uh, let me see. One second. Layout hover label. Deepak's doing great. But, uh, give me these suggestions. But I'm and I am. Oh, there's actually a, there's a whole book. This is Carson book, I suppose. Uh, or who wrote this book? I just want to give credit real quick. Yes, Carson wrote a book. Uh, Carson created the the um, plotly package in our uh, layout hover. Nope, not finding it. Uh, hover label align plotly. Layout hover label hover label line. See, that's the thing is, I bet it's like plotly figure or something. You back, you got any more hints for me? Yes, I bet it's this. I bet it, I'm just kind of pattern matching here. And then what is it? It's, it's left, right, nope. It's top, below, nope. Uh, layout, nope. Hover label, is there a hover label in here? Does anyone see hover label here? Somebody's got a suggestion, let's see. Line. 
I am a... Uh... Nope. I don't think I'll be able to solve this one live. That's pretty typical for me. My, my knowledge of like interact of, of HTML and R, the combination is pretty shallow. All right, so we have three statisticians here. Um, I misread earlier and thought I was miscounting, but we have three uh, African-American stat African statisticians. Um, Albert uh, Baruch uh, Reed, um, David Blackwell, and Roland Fryer. Um, and um, yeah, so if, if uh, we could look at uh, if, uh, them on Wikipedia, I think we will in a bit, but let's take a look back at the table. Uh, yep, so let me see. Um, uh, name, uh, oh, I was, what was looking, I was looking at, yes, I was looking at links. Okay, so imagine I wanted to scrape information from Wikipedia. We might want to get more information. Uh, oh, actually, sorry, before that, someone had one question, which was, can we get from their inventions and accomplishments, can we get a year from there? Mostly not, sometimes. Some of them have multiple years in here, but very few. Okay, we could also, we, so other things we can do. Uh, we can, uh, so we notice we use, we use, can use separate rows to find the common occupations. Uh, we could turn that into various things. Uh, if we can, we could text mine this. I don't think we're going to get anything important from doing a text mine. I don't think we're getting anything interesting from doing text mining here, like uh, it's tokenizing and um, you can do this. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna, uh, like in finding common words, that, especially with, with uh, the, the text corpus this size and where, where each sentence is sort of more relevant, is sort of is as relevant as it is. All right, so the, um, uh, yeah, okay, so we're not gonna text mining, we're not gonna do, what I think we're gonna do is, yeah, web scraping. What I'm gonna take a look at is here's our links and uh, how would we pull information from here? So I'm gonna look up, is have is other people done this? Wikipedia and R. No, that's not gonna help, scrape R. No, this is just using our vest, which uh, I've used. I'm just wondering if there's like a, a package. No, I don't see it. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna do it ourselves. We're gonna pick. Um, uh, we're gonna pick David Blackwell. Uh, so let's take science filter string detect uh, occupation statistician uh, and do the. Um, and pull the links. Okay, so we're gonna take something, wait. Huh, that doesn't, that, that doesn't look right to me, uh, that David Blackwell is lined up. To Keith Black, that looks like a bug, okay. So yeah, it does look like it, there was a bug. Um, maybe it, it was in the wrong row. Uh, actually, both of the, all three of these don't line up. Okay, so there's a data issue in the links column. That means we won't be able to use it. Do we have it? Do, is it just is it potentially scrambled? Uh, if I take a look at the links, if I say, uh, do we have David Blackwell? Yes. Uh, I think that it's just out of order. Okay, maybe we'll try and maybe we'll try and fix it. See, yeah. So David Blackwell is in that data set. Just uh, it's just been scrambled. Okay, so something got out of order. Uh, I don't know the chance now to fix it. Though maybe other people can take a look. And the um, let's see, yeah. Uh, and but yeah, let's take a look at at uh, scraping this page. So we introduced the R pack, the R vest package. I've used this in at least one previous, maybe two previous screencasts. And what I'll do is I'll say read HTML of this page. What I really want is to pull out, say, this information. I actually really like the known for column. Awards is also interesting. Ooh, fields is interesting. I think that gives us a lot more information and, more, and kind of more uh, systematic information, uh, potentially, than uh, this info box. It gives us a lot of things that we might be a little bit harder to get out of birth and death uh, date. So what I'm gonna do is Oh, right, uh, is, is do selector gadget. 
select a gadget does, here we go, is tell me, um, is I, I mouse over this, say this is the element I want, and it tells me the HTML item that I want to use to pull it. So what I'm gonna do is take this and go HTML node, and I use a CSS selector dot V card uh, to find the info box. Uh, and um, what this pulls out, if I do as dot character, I like to see what's in here, is the HTML just from this box. Now, I notice, what if instead of doing this box, I clear it, I wanted to grab just the fields. And I grab dot category. What if I want all of these? No, not that one. Not, wait, hold on. Not this one. I want, I want to grab the, the boxes. Uh, I want to grab like, I want the boxes, I want, I want these two is kind of the thing. Okay, oh, I bet these are all in a table. So what I'm gonna actually try here is HTML. There's always a little bit of experimentation here. Uh, nope, not a, not a table. TH and TD, but not a table? I don't know how that works. Maybe the card is inside the table? Hmm. Uh, TA, TR, TH, TR, T, TH, TD, TH, TD. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, what if I don't, what if I, don't include this. Uh, how, yep, okay, this is the one we want. A TH next to a TD. Uh, is there any? Oh, and they get these two. Oh, but that doesn't, that wouldn't have mattered. All right, what I'm doing is I'm experimenting with this to find a, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure this to find a selector that gets me this column. Okay, and then if I say HTML nodes, here, now I've got all these columns, I turn them into text. And uh, that was pretty helpful. Notice that, that it um, it sticks all these together. I kind of want to know to split these up based on lines. Does HTML text have, it, have any power I can use to use like separator, trim, nope. Nope, I don't have anything I can do with that. Uh, so this is like, um, it's kind of useful. Uh, what I'm gonna do actually, so, um, oh, and, and uh, I do see a note that I can use HTML table to, to parse this. Uh, oh, that went, that went really well. Nice. Uh, so that was a suggestion from VPAC to turn it into a data frame. I can do that. It still does lead to the problem of the, um, the kind of, uh, of appending all these together. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna to just uh, live with that for the moment. Interesting to me that it returns uh, a table and not a, oop, as table. Oop, nope, it just doesn't like that. Uh, the problem is set names key value. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if I can specify that. Header equals oh um. Header equals, is this anything I can do? Yeah, okay, that's fine. X1 and X2. Okay, so this is a way I can, I can kind of like pull out some extra information. Uh, born die, I can grab nationality, I can grab awards. Uh, again, it is kind of, kind of a, it is put all together. Uh, and we do see some cases like set of career popping up for both. All right, but this is a notable one. Why is this notable? If I wanted to say, Here's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to take the the data set. I'm going to pick. I'm going to start with a subset. Normally I do it randomly, but uh, I might as well pick it. Pick just the mathematicians, uh, which includes the three statisticians. Looks like. No, it's not going to work because of the because the link. I'm still going to do it, but but the links are scrambled. So this is not. Uh, but what I like to do is I is not going to get the particular mathematicians. Uh, I'm just I might as well at that point just sample. Remember that they don't link up. Uh, I'm going to sample ten. I'm going to map read HTML to these Sci and call it science HTML. Notice something relevant here. I'm actually I'm doing the read HTML step uh, without all and I'm not actually going to parse it. Uh, I'm doing this step of scraping all the pages in one go, and then I'm doing the parsing in a separate operation. All right, it doesn't, 
four, four. Okay. Yeah, the problem with this is some of them, some of them could fail. Uh, what I can do with that is say possibly from the per package, null. Oh, um, I kill that. Uh, possibly quiet equals true. Oh, nope. I want to quiet. Quiet equals false. I want to know if there's a uh, if there's a bug. I want to know how many of them uh, didn't work because if, if all of them didn't work, that would be uh, not good. So one of them had a 404. Uh, so another of them had a 404, but probably not going to be too many. Uh, notice that I'm separating the step of scrape of downloading the data from parsing the useful information out of it. Uh, that's like a neat trick because here I'm going to write a little function called extract info box. Guess what? You can write a, create an anonymous function with a dot dot pipe, and now this is a function extract info box is now a function that applies those three steps. Isn't that cool? Uh, so now what I can do is take a look at our science HTML. I can map HTML. Uh, I can I can oops, mutate info box is map HTML extract info box. Something's gonna fail here. Uh, all right, XML. The ones that are missing. Oh, um, so one of the problems here is some of them are gonna be null. Uh, filter not is filter not map logical HTML is null. The nulls came from the from the possibly failures. Uh, so that I definitely needed to do. Uh, I, I might still have a uh, problem afterwards. Uh, right. So, but notice like now I now this is the step. Keep going. The, doesn't apply for missing. I'm actually gonna try possibly in this too. Nope, um, ah, only worked on a small subset. Uh, it probably worked, maybe worked only on the ones that did that had an info box. That's okay, might be, that might just be the case. Uh, now I'm gonna select just the, uh, the name doesn't, isn't relevant in this one. I'm gonna select because uh, of the, it doesn't match. I'm gonna select just the info box. Sometimes no, sometimes not. I'm gonna unnest the info box. Uh, that one's not gonna work. Um, uh, what I wanna do is say, Select both the info box and row equals row number or ID. What I'm trying to do is pull out the info box information. Uh, so we have like here, uh, so there we go. We have Archie Alexander. We find out things about uh, him. We find out born, died, nationality, etc. Uh, sometimes there's empty lines. Uh, X1, I can just kind of say is not equal to this or x2 is not equal to uh, empty string. And I'm gonna say info boxes. Why did I do uh, the row number? I probably wanted the link, cause I, I like it being called link. Then I kind of get to keep, the link is the one thing we know is real here. Those warnings, are, those, those are def, I'm actually gonna quiet them. These are ones where there's no info box. Not the world's easiest. I think we might as well just, um, yeah, uh, so now we have the info boxes. And, all right, you know what's interesting? We can also, all right, so the first, it looks like the first row is gonna be the, of the info box is a name. Uh, so I can actually say like info boxes and uh, count, and then I'm gonna do one, one more trick. I'm gonna say key, I just, don't like the x1. Value equals x2. So now I'm doing some reshaping of the data that we scraped from Wikipedia. I'm trying to, I still don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, um, but it, I think it's really useful to be able to like uh, pull this kind of context in. So now I'm going to say, what are the most common keys? Born, died, al modern nationality. All right, and what that means is we can find um, things in common. We could say, you know, I could do this, ah, but I'm gonna try something else. What I'm gonna do is grab out the names. The way I grab a name is grouping by the link, and the name is always gonna be the first value in the key. There's actually a function called first for this. Uh, I think it's always gonna be the first value of the key. Let's find out. These look really reasonable. Sometimes we have an extra thing on it, like a PhD, but mostly we can see, we get the grab, and sometimes a bit of extra like, uh, a citation, but yeah, the, the first item in here is the name. 
So now we grab the name, and uh, we can actually spread the key and value from the tidy our package. Oops, looks like there's sometimes duplicates. What I'm going to do is distinct, distinct the key, keep all is true, not the key, distinct combinations of a name and a key, uh, and then spread them. Uh, that is, I, I don't want to keep both of them. All right, this has way too many columns. This is like, uh, this doesn't show, this is like every person is going to get their own column. So what I'm actually going to do is only keep only keep the keys, add count, key. No, I'm not going to do an add count. I'm going to do a group by key, filter, only keep ones that have at least five values. Ten values? Yeah. And uh, scientific career is always filled with scientific career. I'm going to just remove that one. We saw that a minute ago. All right, so now we, we have like a tidy version of this. Uh, oh, uh oh, this. I need to do the name there. Okay, I needed to do the, the name step before I did the filtering. Uh, all right, so. All right, so we can see some information, some, some things here. We can find things like doctoral advisor, we can find uh, fields, etc. And now we can kind of work with this tidily. I'm out of time, so I'm just gonna say this is as science info boxes. It looks like for most of the of the info boxes, for most of the African American scientists we have here, we can see uh, some details. Oh, and uh, one last step I almost forgot. Janitors clean names, we'll turn these into um, under, we'll turn these into snake case. So then I can say, do we have multiple alma um, maters here? No, it looks like they're always separate, mostly because mo because a lot of people will have had PhDs, gone to multiple schools, uh, etc. Uh, all right, do we have, and we can also look at the fields, we can look at the known for, known for is that something we, known for is something we did not have in the original data set. So we could have joined that in. Uh, known for, well, if I pull known for, one of the challenges here is this, um, is the separation. Now, I'm not, I can't do this right now. I, I have to do much amount of time, uh, but I would want to have ways to split these into multiples, into multiple, um, observations. Uh, all right. Uh, but the story here is is um, I don't have time. I don't have any more I can do right here. This would be an, uh, there are opportunities here to as I said, you could make a you could make a timeline. You could make a um, you could make a network. You could look. You could have it browsable by by probability by by, by the things they're known for or by their fields. Uh, you could look at their. I'm curious what their count nationality. It definitely takes more. Um, Organization, yeah. There's most we mentioned uh, it's African American here, so almost everyone in this list uh, is African American. Though maybe some were born in other countries, and um, yeah. But I just wanted to show that's how we go about going from a list of Wikipedia uh, links to gaining more information from their info boxes. We it's just a taste of Arvest, a little bit of data transformation here. Uh, okay. All right, so that's it for today. If you're interested in, in I definitely, I'm going to have the code up on GitHub. So if you're interested in learning more about these uh, these uh, scientists celebrating their lives, um, then I uh, I definitely encourage you to use the code. All right, and that, um, but uh, yeah, that and besides that, we also learned how to use Plotly to create an interactive timeline, uh, formatting some of these to to. Um, uh, to be able to zoom in on individual points. I kind of thought of that because is it, this is a graph where you want somebody to be able to look at each point as opposed to looking at the whole or looking at patterns. Um, we did a little bit of data cleaning. We, we certainly could have done more. We're parsing the whole story. All right, so that's um, uh, that's it for today. Um, I really enjoyed this. I hope you did too. Black Lives Matter. I'll see you next week.